I really love this problem. It is based upon palindromes, which is a very familiar concept. It is written in such a concise manner. And as soon as you read it, you understand it perfectly well. But what happens when you try to solve it? There is a lot of trick involved. And the best part is, if your fundamentals of a palindrome are correct, this problem is very easy to solve. And you will find it in a lot of coding interviews. So let's see what we can do about it. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. First, I will explain you the problem statement and we will look at some sample test cases. Going forward, we will start off with the brute force solution and see its limitations. After that, we will find an efficient solution to the problem and it is very, very simple. Going forward, we will also do a dry run of the code so that you can visualize how all of this is actually working in action. Without further ado, let's get started. First of all, let's try to make sure that we are understanding the problem statement correctly. In this problem, you are given a string and you have to determine if you can convert it to a palindrome just by deleting any single character. And you just have to delete one character, not all instances of that character. So what does all of this mean? Let us look at some of the sample test cases. In our first test case, my string is ABA, right? So can you make it into a palindrome just by deleting one character? You notice that this is already a palindrome, right? So you can return a true over here. In the next string, you see the string ABCA. Currently, this is not a palindrome, right? Because it reads different from the front and from the back. Can you make it a palindrome? You see that if I just delete a single character C, then this string becomes a palindrome. So in this scenario, once again, you are going to return true as your answer, right? By the way, if you're new to palindromes, I would highly recommend you to watch my introductory video on palindromes first. This will give you a very good idea about what is the most efficient way to determine if a string or a sequence is palindrome or not. That will be very helpful. You can find the link in the description below. Looking at our third test case, I have the string ABC. This is not a palindrome, right? So how can you convert it? You see that even if you delete any character, right now it's not a palindrome. If you delete a B, once again, it is not a palindrome. If you delete a C, once again, it is not a palindrome. So what do you do now? This string cannot be converted. So for this third test case, you are going to return false as your answer. So this is the basic crux of the problem. You just have to tell me true or false if you can convert the given string to a palindrome just by deleting a single character. You do not have to tell me which character do you have to delete. So if you feel that now you have understood the problem statement even better, feel free to first try it out once again on your own. Otherwise, let us dive into the solution and look at the most naive way. To start understanding things, I have taken up a sample string, correct? And now you have to determine if you can convert it to a palindrome just by deleting a single character. You notice that this string is not a palindrome right now. If you read it from the front, you get R-O-T-A. And if you're reading from the back, you get R-O-X. So you can see that this is not a palindrome. And it is evident that if you delete this character X, then this string in fact becomes a palindrome. So the most naive way to approach this problem will be that you start deleting one character at a time. What you can do is, first of all, remove the character R. And now you have your string. You can now apply the algorithm to find if a string is palindrome. If yes, then hey, this was your character. If not, then you will try to delete the character O. Once again, you will run your entire algorithm and check, hey, is the remaining string a palindrome? No. Then you will try to remove the next character that is T. And once again, you will keep on running this algorithm again and again. Eventually, what will happen is you will try to remove the character X and once again check, hey, is my remaining string a palindrome? This time it will be true. And yes, you can say that, okay, I can remove one character and this string will become a palindrome. So this is the brute force approach. And if you notice, we are doing so many iterations. Every time we delete a character, and then we run the complete algorithm just to check, hey, is my string a palindrome? Is my string a palindrome? Again and again. So this will end up taking a lot of time. This will be order of n squared time complexity. But when it comes to palindromes, you need to find efficient solutions. Think about it. If this string is very huge, then you will end up wasting a lot of time. So definitely we need something efficient. What can you do about it? To start coming up with an efficient solution, you need to go back to the basics. 
and try to recollect how did we efficiently determine if a sequence is palindrome or not. You had two pointers, one that started at the beginning and one that started at the very end. Our approach was that you compare these two characters. If they are same, that means this string is a palindrome and we need to move ahead. What will you do? You advance this pointer by one step and you advance the second pointer one step backwards. Once again, what will you do? You will compare these two characters and then keep on going ahead, right? So now try to think what happens if we apply the same approach in this problem also. So right now compare both of these characters. They are the same. So what will I do? I will advance this first pointer one step ahead and this second pointer will go one step backward. Now comes the interesting and the most crucial part of this problem. You see that these two characters are not the same, right? To make this string a palindrome, you only have a choice to remove one character. If this string were a palindrome, these two characters had to match, right? So if this is not a palindrome, you have to delete only one of these characters. So either you will have to remove this T or you will have to remove this X. There is no third choice. Just take a moment and understand what I'm trying to say. These are the only two options that you can delete. So once you decide that, okay, I will delete one of them. This will lead you into two scenarios. What just happened? Either I have deleted this first character T or I have deleted this second character X. There is no third choice. And out of these two strings, you just have to determine, hey, by deleting one character, did I arrive at a palindrome? So all you need to do is once again, try to check this string. Once again, you apply the same algorithm. So you check R and R are same. Okay, good enough, advance. O and O are same, that is also good. A and X are not the same. So even after deleting one character, you could not achieve a palindrome. But you have one more string to check. So in the second string also, try to apply the same algorithm. What will you do? You check R and R are same. Okay, good enough. O and O are same. Good enough. Check it out. T and T are again the same. And you are at the last character that is a single one. So you stop over here. So what did we realize? Just by deleting one character, I was able to arrive at a palindrome. So that is all you have to do. Once you have your string, start to traverse from both the directions using these two pointers. As soon as you find a character that does not match, you will split into two halves. Once you will try to determine if it is a palindrome if you skip this character. And the other part will be that you try to skip this character and then determine if you are reaching a palindrome or not. And that's it. You do not have to take any more decisions. So based upon this idea, let us quickly do a dry run of the code and see how it is working in action. Before moving ahead, I would just like to say that if you do like my content, consider joining my channel and becoming a member. It really supports me to keep on bringing all of this quality content to you. Let's get back to it. On the left side of your screen, you have the actual code to implement this solution. And on the right, once again, I have a sample string that is passed in as an input parameter to the function valid palindrome. So first things first, what do we do? We assign a left and a right pointer that will point at the first character and the last character respectively, correct? And if you notice in my code, I have the same algorithm to check if a string is a palindrome or not. This is a helper method and it is exactly similar how you check a single sequence to be a palindrome. You have a left pointer and a right pointer and then you will try to converge in the middle. But moving on to our main code block, what do we do? Once again, we start a while loop where we will keep on doing this until this left pointer is behind this right pointer, correct? So what are we doing over here? If the left and right character match, we will keep on advancing them. So till the points they are matching, we keep on doing a left plus plus and we keep on doing a right minus minus. At this particular point, you see that T and X do not match. This is where you have to take the decision, right? And this is the else condition that does all the magic. What are we doing over here? We only have two cases. One case is try to check if you can achieve a palindrome by doing a left plus one and right. This means that in my function, I will send a left plus one 
and write remains at the same place. So basically you deleted this character. In this function, you will check, hey, if a and x are equal, no. So this will return a false. In the next possible scenario, what do you do? You try to check, hey, can I achieve a palindrome if I do a right minus one? If you do a right minus one, this pointer starts pointing at t. And once again, this will now land into this method. So now you are checking, hey, is t and t the same? Yes. So you will advance these two pointers. Now they are at the same character a and once again they will advance forward. You know that you need to stop as soon as your left pointer is ahead of the right pointer. This is what we have in our while loop, correct? So this is where you stop and since none of the conditions fail, you will eventually return a true. So what did we just do? Just in one scan, you were able to determine if by deleting a one character, can you achieve a palindrome? So this gives me a time complexity of order of n. And if you realize, we do not take any extra space also to arrive at a solution. So the space complexity of this solution is order of 1. I hope I was able to simplify the problem and its solution for you. As per my final thoughts, I just want to say that problems on palindromes, they will never leave you. You will find them time and again in some of the other instances. You will find them in strings, in numbers and at every other place. To be very honest, when I approached this problem, even I got confused for a little while that, okay, what will be the most efficient way to solve it? But then again, if your fundamentals are correct, and if you understand the most efficient way to find out palindromes, tackling these kind of problems can become very, very easy. So don't try to complicate a problem. Try to approach it in the most simple way as you can, and then try to build upon the logic and think about other edge scenarios. That way, you will be able to come up with a better solution each and every time. So, while going throughout the video, did you face any problems or have you seen any other problems on palindromes which are very tricky? So, tell me all of it in the comment section below. It will become a nice collection for anyone else also who is watching the video. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This motivates me to make more and more such videos where I can simplify programming for you. Also, a huge shout out to all the members who support my channel. This really keeps me going and keep letting me know what other problems you want me to solve next. I know I get a little late sometimes, but I do read all of your comments and try to get back to you. Stay tuned for the next video. See ya.